Buying land is the American dream. It's something that a lot of people aspire to get to. It has absolutely changed my life becoming a landowner for the better, but also a little bit for the worse. See, there's certain things about buying land that does suck and nobody talks about it on YouTube. So in today's video, I'm gonna tell you some of the things that aren't so great about being a landowner that I don't see anywhere else. Let's get into it. The first tip I have for you is more land actually isn't better. You need to be mindful of a couple of things. First off, if you have, let's say six acres of land that you're about to buy, but four of those acres are steep on a mountain with rocks or things like that, you really only have two acres of usable land. So if you spend more money on that, than you would on a piece of land that is only three acres, but all of the land is usable, you're spending a lot of money for a mountain that you can't build on, or you could spend a lot of money trying to build on it. So you need to change what you're looking for. You are not looking for the most amount of acres that you can afford. You are looking for the most amount of usable acres that you can afford. Keep that in mind as you go and look at land and as you purchase land, what is actually usable in what you're buying. Another downside of having a lot of land is it's a lot of land. So a lot of things are gonna be different. The first thing though is if you spend a ton of money buying a lot of land, I hope you have money left over to buy an ATV or a Polaris or something along those lines. Do you actually think with those old knees, you can really walk around 10, 15, 20 acres of land? Absolutely not. You're gonna need to purchase some type of off-road vehicle to maneuver and get around the piece of land. So however much you're paying for the land, be sure to factor in another 10 grand for some type of off-road vehicle to get around the land. On the topic of having a lot of land, you also are gonna need to upkeep all of this land. So there may be some places that you might wanna have the grass cut regularly, you might wanna have trees trimmed, things like that. Well, this isn't your half acre lot in your suburban town. No, 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 no. You've got three, five, 10, 15, 20 acres of land. So it's gonna be a lot more money to have landscaping done, to get the grass cut, those type of things. So you're gonna have to factor that in as well. The upkeep on these pieces of land, it's kind of annoying. For me personally, I own three acres of land, which I think three to five acres is really the sweet spot for someone who has never purchased land before. It's, I think, the amount that someone could walk into, and it's still gonna be challenging to own and to upkeep and handle all of those type of things that no one ever talks about that we're talking about in this video today. But the price I pay to get the grass cut is I would say maybe $150 more than I thought it would be, but it makes perfect sense. It's a lot of land. Speaking of things that I thought would be cheaper than they are, let's talk about taxes. You now own that piece of land. Some people may own their home, may own something else, but now you also have to be aware that you are a landowner in that town, in that city, in that county. So all of the things that being a landowner brings with it, you now have. Every year, I pay hundreds of dollars in taxes for a school system that I have never gone to, and I also don't have any kids. So I'm just helping out the region. And you kind of have to be aware of that. That goes with the course, but I don't think anybody talks about that. You're gonna be paying school taxes, road taxes, all of those types of things to that county, to that city. Also, it becomes one more thing that you have to remember, one more thing that you either have to automate or just be cognizant of. Because if you don't pay those taxes on time, they absolutely can take your land. So before buying land, you should really look into how much you think the taxes are gonna be on that land. And you also need to be aware of when they send out those taxes and when you need to pay them by. There are penalties and fees if you pay them late. This one is on a sliding scale. It depends on how raw the piece of land that you actually purchase is and what you're looking to do with it. But I promise you, infrastructure costs more than you think it would. For me, my land was completely raw. No septic, no nothing. I'm currently installing fences, planting trees, getting a road put in, uh, a parking spot done, getting electricity installed. There's just so much work that needs to be done. And I promise you, it costs more than you think it would. You think you're just gonna run in there, run and gun, get it done, and it takes so much longer. And that's why I always tell people, again, I think you really don't need 10, 15, 20 acres to start. Get something that you can manage with. Because also, if you spend your entire budget on buying the land, you're not gonna have any money left over to get through that next phase. And that next phase is setting up the infrastructure, the roads, et cetera, but then also building. Please, please think long term. If you're looking to farm, homestead, or set up a glamp site, these things aren't built in a day. Neither was Rome. So take your time, don't rush into it. You're not missing out. Speaking of building, 
The building process sucks. I don't care if you're building it yourself. I don't care how many years you've been a carpenter for. I don't care how many sheds you've built. I don't care if you're paying someone else to build it for you and you're Mr. Bucks a plenty and you're gonna sit in your suburban home while they're out there in the hot summer day building your new little whatever you're building on your land. It sucks. It sucks no matter what. So strap in and be ready to fight. You're gonna have to push back on certain things. You're gonna have to change your mind as the build process goes on. You're gonna have to be cognizant of your budget and the entire project management of everything going on. So you need to be honest with yourself. Do you really have the time? Do you have what it takes to get the job done? I used to work for a tech company, but we actually worked in property tech. So I've seen a ton of developers start projects and not have the funds to finish them or start projects, have the funds, but want nothing to do with the day-to-day -day activities of actually getting it across the line. Well, you know what happens when you have the money, but you don't have the drive and you don't have what it takes to step in and make sure it crosses the line? People work real slow, projects drag, and they get more and more and more costly. So please do factor in the actual build process of whatever the hell you got going on over there, because it's going to be more difficult than you think it will be. But it is absolutely possible. I'm just telling you right now, I don't care how much money you have, creativity you have or whatever, you need grit. Just be sure that you have what it takes. Another thing that no one ever talks about with buying land is your neighbors will absolutely make or break you. I don't care if you're just buying a piece of land to build a home, you're going to put up very high fences, a long driveway, you think you're going to be left alone. It doesn't matter. No matter how unfounded the claims are, if your neighbors put in a complaint with the city, they have to, by law, check in on that. And that can get very, very annoying. Now, that problem is made worse if you want a homestead, farm, glamp, rent your land out to RVers or people that live in tiny homes. It's just an absolute hassle. I had a horror story when I was going to look at land where someone made it very clear that they didn't want me to be their neighbor. I don't know why they made that so clear or why they didn't want me to be their neighbor, but someone actually came and looked at the land while I was there looking at the land. And that individual was very okay with that person being their neighbor. Check the link in the description to watch that video and watch me go through that entire story. So that being said, to be honest, I was a total creep. When I saw the piece of land that I really wanted to buy, I double checked the records. I got the last names of who, the people who would be my neighbors. I may or may not have checked them out on Facebook, seen some Instagram, just make sure that they're cool people. Also, when I moved in, I promise you, I was smiling from ear to ear as I knocked on their doors and introduced myself. Hey, what's going on? We're attached at the hip now. We also are attached financially, okay? I don't wanna bring down your property value. You don't wanna bring down mine. Let's work together. So I think it's best to try to establish those types of friendships and those type of relationships early on. Once you establish them, leave those people the hell alone. The best neighbors are the ones that leave you the hell alone. They wait from afar and you're on your day. No chit chatty, I don't, I don't need any of that in my life. That's just me personally. Buying land is difficult and there are some pitfalls to it, but hey, it actually could be pretty awesome. So check out the video on the screen right now for my best tips on buying land. Peace.